What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? So today, we are going to tackle a second part to does preheating affect penetration. But we're not going to be looking at the weld penetration. We're going to look at the structural soundness or the strength of welds and what can go wrong when you preheat excessively. So with that said, let's get into it. So in the previous video regarding this, I did test welds with 7018 on a flat plate, and I also did fillet welds to determine if preheating affects penetration. And link in the description for that video, but the gist of what we learned in that is that the actual depth of penetration isn't going to change much with a preheat at all. And it's kind of not really the wisest thing to do uh, to heat something really hot in an attempt to use an underpowered welder to gain fusion. It just doesn't work. And I can tell you from my own personal experience it doesn't work. But hey, you know, proof's in the pudding. That's why I did that video. But when I was doing that video, I kind of had an epiphany. Well, if ice cold plates, which I did a video on that as well, link in the description, will negatively affect the weld strength. If my thought was, why not redo this test that I did in the previous video and heat the plates again to 700 or so and 1,000 degrees, let them cool off, so basically weld on them hot, let them cool off, and bend test them and see if the welds will fail. Now, I have a feeling that they will fail during this test, and I even said that in a previous video. I said, you know, it's not too wise to be talking about a seven, eight hundred thousand degree preheat. I think that you're really barking up the wrong tree with that one, but that's my opinion, and how would we know that for sure unless we test it? So what I'm going to do is a quick little book learning session here that'll help you guys out understanding when preheat is necessary. Then we're going to heat these up, weld them, and break them and see what happens. Preheating materials is kind of controversial and there's so many misunderstandings on this and that's why I thought, well, in the off chance some of you that are watching this video, this might be the first video you've ever seen from me and you might not have seen a lot of the other videos where I did cover this to some extent. So guess what? I wanted to cover it now so we're all on the same page. But the hot topic is preheat. And what is preheat? Well, it's simple. You're taking whatever you're welding on, be it steel, aluminum, magnesium, whatever it is, and you're heating it up hotter than what it already is. Very simple, right? Well, the question is, does it have an effect? The answer is yes, but I feel in personally, I feel that it's probably more negative than positive depending on what you're actually doing. So a genuine average standard is, is that if your steel or your base material is colder than 50 degrees, you should probably heat, preheat it to about 100, okay? That's not much of a preheat, and that is nowhere near what a lot of guys on the internet talk about doing. They talk about 5, 6, 700, 900 degree preheats, all that stuff, right? Well, the American Welding Society, Lincoln Electric, Miller, they all pretty much set a standard and in most welding codes says 50 degrees or below you preheat it sometimes it's to 90 or 100 it might be to 150 all depends on what you're welding okay so from a box stock perspective bare bones yes you should preheat material if it's colder than 50. if you're in a northern state like what i am and it's negative 16 out and you're trying to do a steel repair absolutely if you do not preheat that uh, your welds will likely be very brittle because of how fast that grain structure solidifies in that molten pool that it's going to be probably, I would say, overall harder than it should be and it will not handle bending very well. So yes, preheat, there are certain times where it's mandatory, even on mild steel. 
Where it gets a little bit sketchy is what alloy are you welding on? There are certain alloys of material out there that absolutely require preheat. Say you want to weld one inch thick chromoly and you think that welding on it at 70, 80 degrees is a great idea. Guess what? The weld may crack before you even finish. So there are certain materials, uh, especially in the higher strength steel category and kind of, I don't want to call them rare elements, but in canal and all sorts of stuff like in piping where you need to preheat in order to keep your welds from cracking. Normally a good standard for that would be ask yourself if what you're welding on is exposed to extremely high temperatures, high vibration, or high impact force. Those things come together, any one of those or all of them combined, to tell you you probably need a preheat. However, when you're dealing with those kinds of materials, you probably should know exactly what alloy you're welding on if you actually want success because you're not going to just go on a lot of those with 7018 and call it good. It's not going to work. So again, preheating, it depends on alloy. Generally speaking, uh, it's not bad if you preheat it to 100 to 200 degrees, but when you start talking 5, 6, 7, 800, where it's not even welded on and it's that hot, I think you're barking up the wrong tree. So base temp below 50 preheat, depending on alloy, yes, maybe not. Question comes up, how hot? Again, this depends on your base material. If you're talking chromoly or any number of higher strength like steel alloys, they're generally pretty well published as far as what preheat temps. Might be 200, might be 300, somewhere in that ballpark. Could be hotter, could be a little colder. You, it really pays to know what you're welding on if you want to have success. In no circumstances, and I'm saying this loosely, would a common material that you might have contact with need a, a six, seven, eight hundred degree preheat. Caveat to that, sometimes when welding castings, you might actually have to exceed 600 degrees on a preheat to get it to actually, uh, the weld not to just break right off of it. So common materials other than cast iron and cast steel that you would need to get above four, 500, that you would be exposed to very, very few. Of course, in industry in a power plant, there's some that they actually weld at six, 700 degree preheat, and they actually have thermal blankets and inductance heaters on it to keep it that hot. So that's well out of the realm of what you and I would do. Now, another thing you need to concern yourself with is inner pass temperature. When you heat up plates to say 500 degrees or something you're welding on, the second you weld on it, it's now no longer 500 degrees. And if you put three, four hot passes on something that was already 500 degree, you might hit seven, eight, 900 degrees. And guess what? You're now at what I would consider the threshold of probable failure. And what I mean by that is that I believe that mild steel somewhere between 750 and 1000 is going to suffer from weakened welds that will likely fail far easier than uh, room temperature plates. And this is concerning mild steel, and it will also have a similar effect to your tool steels and all of those. When you start getting up to that dull red and that, you know, thousand degree, man, that's, again, not a tree you want to be barking up, so be smart about it. If they say 500 degrees on a particular material you're welding, verify that that is pre-welding and that isn't maximum. And if you decide to put a ton of passes on it, be careful because you might have to slow your roll and put down fewer passes and give it time to cool if you're hitting up there in the 650, 750, 800 because you're in the ballpark of possible failures. The last thing you need to concern yourself with is cool down time. So a lot of what you would be welding that would require this in the home would be like a cast iron. And long story short, the longer you can prolong the cooling so it's not rapid, the higher success you'll have with welds not just breaking clean off the castings. So this becomes a critical aspect of cast iron welding. However, a lot of materials, higher strength alloys may have specifications for this. And I guess, guys, what I'm really saying here is most of what you and I would come in contact with to weld 
would probably not benefit by any more than a 300 degree preheat other than cast iron. And as far as cool down, you never want to quench it. You don't want to rapidly cool it, just let it air cool. If you notice welds cracking or pinging or failing on something that's steel, then you probably aren't welding on mild steel. You're welding on some other higher strength alloy. And in that case, you got to do things differently. But this should give you a really good idea of what we're dealing with. So now let's preheat the first set of plates to 750. I'll run a weld on them. We're going to do fillet welds and then I'll do one at a thousand run a weld and we're going to do single stringer welds with eighth inch 7018 at about 120 amps and we'll bend test them and see what happens. So these plates are finally cooled down. They're still warm a little bit to the touch. And of course, it's piss pouring rain outside. So I'll try and be brief with this. So hopefully we can bend this and actually hear something. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bend away from the face of the weld, a simple bend test. Now keep in mind, this is 3.8 steel. This is not thin material. And for you guys across the pond, I'll put up the size now of how thick this is. But a 7018 eighth inch single pass has no problem passing a bend like this. And this weld is far crappier than either one of these. And it held up just fine. And as a matter of fact, I've never seen a 7018 single pass weld on this break. Uh, unless the plates are super cold, which any weld would fail in that case. So uh, I have pretty high expectations that at least one of these will probably survive a full bend. Now, the 700 degree preheat, I let it get to about 700 peak and that was it and welded it. The weld is definitely flatter than what you would expect to see out of a 7018. Uh, it's not bad looking. I don't really see any defects. Keep in mind, I welded this in a flat position. And the reason I did that was simple. Uh, on this 1000 degree preheat, it's very difficult to weld without undercutting the hell out of the top toe because of how liquid that molten puddle is. So to be fair, I thought that the only reasonable way to do this would be to weld both of them in a flat position. Now both of them have a kind of blown out end and I purposely leave that just because, well, to be consistent and I don't go back and fill that. But at these preheat levels, that's going to be part of life. You're not going to be able to get a nice decent stop. This thousand degree one uh, is even more flat and it's starting to get almost concave. Yeah, it's starting to, but I don't really see any weld defects. And you know what? A little bit of undercut wouldn't have caused a failure on this anyways. Well, I think it's time to go throw these up in the shop press and break them. Up first, 700 degree preheat. No real issue. Everything looks good. This looks no different than a normal 7018 bend. So now let's do a thousand degree.
also defect free. So once again, I apologize for the rain. There's not much I can do about it. I tried it to weld the cloud shut, but guess what? Didn't hold. So anyways, we did a 700 degree preheat and a thousand degree preheat and both of them successfully bent. Now the thousand degree preheat to me seemed like it took less force than the 700. I'll you know, have to look at the footage and put a comment up now as to whether or not that's the case. But to me, it seemed weaker. But they both held up, just like a normal room temperature plate. Now, where things get interesting is my apprentice, Owen, and I, we did a preheat of well above 1,000 degrees. We were at dull red, which is somewhere, I guess, around 1150 to 1250 for temp, and that's Fahrenheit. And we bent this together, and we had a failure. And this has got to be the strangest failure I've ever seen uh, for a stick weld. Now, 6013, 6010, 6011 won't bend on something like this without breaking. But 7018 universally will without issue. However, this guy basically like delaminated from this. And I'll put up a picture right now of what it looks like up close. But it's almost like the weld just sat right on the base material and just popped off. I've never seen anything quite like that. It's definitely unusual. So I would say that... Would I trust a thousand degree preheat? Absolutely not. There's you have no business preheating something that hot. But I have a feeling anything above eleven to twelve hundred degrees Fahrenheit, and you're probably going to see weird failures like what this plate has, where it just pops off like it wasn't even attached. So really weird. Never seen anything like that. So anyways, might as well go to conclusion since it's pouring rain out. Um, my thoughts are this, if you have cold plates, preheat it to 100, 150. If you're welding on higher strength alloys or something that requires preheat, preheat it to the recommended temperature and watch your inner pass temperature to where it doesn't get too hot. As far as using preheat to be able to weld with a undersized welder on thick plate, you have no business doing that, buddy. Don't do it, and this isn't going to buy you anything. And... The gist of this is never heat your plates to dull red and attempt to weld them. Nothing good will come out of it. You'll have a failure like this more than likely if you stress the part. So I think that covered it pretty good. If you got any thoughts, questions, comments, you know where to leave them. Until next time.